I'm going to do a really brief announcement. So essentially when we were um, putting together as the program committee um, all of the great talks you've been seeing, we noticed a pattern over and over again, which was there's amazing mapping communities that are active and just doing like just mind-blowing work uh, all over the world. So we wanted to have two sessions. There's one today, there's going to be one tomorrow at the same time, um, highlighting um, brief presentations from different mappers um, all over. So um, with that, um, they're each going to take about 10 minutes, and this is Juan. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Juan. Um, when I first... Um, knew about the, what, when the GPS for cars started with uh, spoken directions started in Argentina and some other countries, they came with, a, with an alert that says you are in a dangerous zone. So I, I was wondering who determines this is a dangerous zone. So I, I looked it up and I found uh, someone answering, the short, the short answer is one month slam is another month land use residential. So uh, I was happy to, to afterwards, I, I started working at Wingu. It's an NGO in Argentina that applies technology to other NGOs so they can better do their work. We team up with ASIG, which is a social NGO, and created Caminos de la Villa, which is a project for neighbors in slums to, to petition the government. So when we started, there was a problem because uh, even if uh, these slums are in Buenos Aires capital, in, they are in the, in the nation's capital, there are, play, there are almost no maps. Uh, there are just a few avenues, but you can see there are plenty of people living here. Actually, in this slum, there are 40,000 um, people living, but there are no maps of these zones. So we mapped all, uh, we mapped five slums of Buenos Aires, uh, and we, we placed in the map 27,000 uh, 27, families um, in about three weeks' work. So I don't know if you can see, but this is before and after map. We, we map the streets, the, the pathways, um, and we placed uh, lots of points of interest, like uh, schools, or community centers that there were no maps about it. And we made an online platform so people can um, present issues in their location. So each of the red uh, pins is one neighbor uh, telling there's a problem there. Um, but they couldn't do this before because there were, there were no maps for them. So after we map it, we present the project to, to the neighbors. This, this is the presentation of the project in a church, in a local church. Uh, in, in this community, um, the mailman, the only mailman for slum in Buenos Aires, helped us map the, the slum. And why do you do, did, do this? Well, first, to have a better understanding of the situation, because Many local uh, leaders know about the situation of, the, of their slums, but they, nobody else does. Uh, to give the people a map, because they were living in a, in a city, all, all of the surroundings are mapped, but they, they weren't on the, on the map. To give the vis visibility to the problems. Uh, and then we uh, collected all the information about the state doing any works in, in these slums. For example, they are doing a, a, a drinking water pipeline, but the, the work is stopped or nobody else, or it's not working. So all the neighbors can claim about this work. And there's a federal law in, in, the, in the city that any neighbor can petition um, an, any information to the government but this has to be um, legally it's very bureaucratic. So ASIC uh, takes all the claims from, from the neighbors and presents them to, to, the, uh, to the judges. Um, with this, we, can, we enable the, the neighbors to monitor the work so they can take pictures of or, or any of the works that are, are not... Uh, there's budget, but it's, it's not make, the, the state is not making it. 
They can petition new public works. Um, they can monitor public services because, for example, uh, waste recollection barely works in, in slums, so they can petition that. Uh, they can demand better budget for these uh, slums and to put the problems in the agenda. With all of this, what we do is hold the government accountable for, for the problems that, uh, of the slums. So we uh, did this platform, and all the neighbors can pull all the information. Oh, and with this information, we, uh, the CIG makes, makes uh, reports about the situations are presented to official uh, representatives so they know what, what is going on on these slums. We release information, this information to the media. We make campaigns, and as if on, on very big issues, they take legal actions against the city government. And our first, first success story is we made a campaign about education in the slums, and we made, the, we made all the rep city representatives to increase the budget for the education in one of the slums. Uh, and we, uh, Avina, which is we, the, who funded this project, last week uh, found, told us they are going to fund us to map all, this, all the slums in the city. Uh, and that's about 250,000 people. And uh, we're going to map, beginning next week, we're going to map all the city slums. All the information uh, about this, well, the maps are open street maps, but all the information about the, the claims of the neighbors are open, open data. Um, that's it. Hello, everyone. I'm Dewi from Humanitarian Open Street Map in Indonesia. Today, I want to share about our mapping project to Open Street Map for Data Preparedness in Indonesia. Beginning of Indonesia, hot Indonesia, uh, they start with the question Can Open Street Map be used to map exposure in Indonesia? That's uh, the first we create a participatory mapping using Tasking Manager to Earthquake Padang in 2009. All people in the world help the mapping to Tasking Manager, and therefore the Tasking Manager is complete a few months. And the local government corporate with IFDR, uh, they interesting about using open street map to collect the exposure data. Also, we start to translate, uh, translate uh, the JOSM JOSM to uh, Indonesia for easy to participant to understand about JOSM. After that, uh, IFDR create a new plugin. Uh, the name is uh, INASEP. INASEP is a tools for disaster manager to study realistic function scenario for weather planning, preparedness, the, and response activity. So uh, the process in ASEP, we, we have to uh, data, hazard data, and exposure data. And OpenStreetMap can use the collect the exposure data and run in ASEP. The result is map and impact and action for disaster manager. This is uh, how to process Inasef. Inasef only run in QG software, and uh, the, the various data before run in Inasef, and the result is how many building the impact, uh, the hazard, and how many people to be evacuated. Also, we, we create the tutorial about that, and uh, we put in Learn OSM. This is a result about maps for contingency plan document. This is uh, in the Bengawan Solo River in Central Java. And the result we get from INASEF to people affected and building affected. Same with uh, before in this uh, Makassar city for flood hazard. And the, and the second is uh, Mon Vulcano Guntur. 
the the all uh, we process in in a safe to the result. And I have uh, the video about the our project in Indonesia. They start with 2011 with program to to exposure mapping to social maps. And it uh, this is uh, 2012. And we start to SD4CP or scenario development for contingency planning in six provinces to to concern with uh, disaster area in Indonesia and one million building maps in Indonesia in 2013. And this is uh, our project in Makassar. The process we use the tasking manager and we import the local government to map uh, in open street map. Also we we join uh, to university. This is uh, Bangawan Solo River. The the and also in Cilacap for tsunami contingency plan, we cooperate with Indonesian Red Cross. Okay. And open street map in Indonesia in uh, on March 2015. Number of training is 19. Number of participants is more than 2,000. And number of province is 15. And number of building until now is more than 2 million building uh, map in in a safe map in open street map. And this is diagram about OSM building statistic in Indonesia. Some province in Indonesia have been mapped to open street map because our mapping project and its province in Indonesia doesn't have uh, data open street map. Can open street map be used to map exposure Indonesia? Yes, uh, but we have the challenge. The first is sustainable skill and change resistance in government and organization. The second is from gig the mess and the third is build community for mapping through other project and the and the first uh, solution is uh, to sustainable skill we cooperate with university roso we hold the university roso training in 2015 and why we cooperate with university in 15 province in indonesia because the result about uh, before our mapping project, they have skill and they have to lock, they have uh, become the local point for mapping open street map. And to from gig to the mess, we also have the communication specialist and social media. If you want to further information about our mapping project in Indonesia, you can follow the Twitter and you can join in communitas. Also, we, we have the blog in Indonesia, openstreetmap.id. And we also create a tutorial, video tutorial in OpenStreetMap Indonesia channel. We also uh, create missing map and first meetup to keep touch the participant in Indonesia. This is a tutorial module we create in Bahasa and English to easy the participant to want to understand with OpenStreetMap. Also video tutorial and the solution about uh, the third is mapping OSM with other project. This is project in uh, Pluit, North Jakarta. We create photo points, OSM also platform use Usahidi and the participant from high school. 
Also, we corporate with open content in Kalimantan to map point of interest and with article about the facility public in wikipedia.org. So we create data visualization uh, with Drupal to web gist from OpenStreetMap data. And the, our project now is training and field mapping in South Sulawesi, East Java and East Nusa Tenggara province to help uh, to help uh, disaster manager a local government Indonesia to create a risk management disaster. And the participant from student from university wrote so before and they can help our mapping project and that's all uh, this is my team in indonesia if you want to ask about open Web indonesia you can visit the our blog or our email thank you Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Evgenia Luchnikova, um, and I'm delighted to be here and talking about OSM and national parks. Um, my talk will be divided in three parts. Uh, and like, uh, first, I'd like to fill you in on the history of the project. Then I will uh, give you some information about my team. And uh, next, we will look uh, the project uh, results and specifics. Uh, national parks in Ukraine can be considered in the first place uh, as a science department and in the secondary as a tourist attraction. Several years ago, national parks have no data, special data I mean, uh, for managing resources due to that they have no possibility to work properly. Um, and that is why the scientists employees uh, ask for help uh, in uh, Ukrainian uh, uh, OpenStreetMap community and other JS specialists on other conference um, to find the optimal solution to data maintains. Uh, so this is a short story how I did it up here. Um, so uh, this work um, uh, brought together a lot of people science employees from different organizations uh, um, teachers, students, amateurs, jazz specialists, and uh, Intetix company employees. Um, Intetix company is the biggest uh, Ukrainian jazz company um, in that region, and uh, its corporate culture encourage uh, employees to participate in different volunteer projects, and uh, including uh, national parks project. Uh, different science uh, um, employees from different organizations are interested in uh, using up-to-date uh, data and uh, uh, they uh, like to, to have a platform where they can easily share their results. Uh, teachers and students uh, would like to have experience in the field work and uh, processing collecting data. And uh, the number of the local members uh, had been increased uh, uh, as far as the in process include uh, involved uh, scouts, uh, young naturalists, and um, uh, their parents and local people. Uh, so uh, during the uh, different events such as training, workshops, uh, meetings, mapping um, parties, um, formed a stable, active community with the centers and national parks. Um, and um, let's review project results. Uh, 
the main of the um, project, uh, um, the main aim of the project is uh, uh, base map creation for national parks. We concentrated on um, uh, next features like uh, borders, buildings, road, including passes and uh, points of interest and, uh, and uh, water features. Um, you can look at the table and see information regarding uh, the project uh, status in the different national parks. Um, um, the special request, request from the national parks uh, was to create uh, relief and uh, landscape maps. Um, and this data are maintained outside of OSM. Um, and um, regarding the protected uh, areas burden, it's a huge work that can uh, that was done um, for some of the protected areas and national parks. And uh, the um, information about the protected areas is typically stored and uh, uh, in hard copy reports. So there is no digital version of it. Uh, this is a challenge for us, and um, that is why because. Um, uh, not data availability significantly restricts protected area security management, monitoring, and other stuff. Uh, but also, it provokes the violation of um, territory integrity and land use. Uh, so during this stage, uh, the main goal was establishing open and uh, free access for uh, uh, for the community and for. Uh, other for people, so uh, you can refer to the um, um, slide. Next slide, base map. So uh, usual uh, thing for SIM community. It's a base map of one of the national park, and the next slide is a base map uh, with re uh, relief. Um, yeah, uh, for. Uh, last several years, uh, we have handled several uh, field mapping parties, and um, uh, it's actually it's a great opportunity to get rest from the daily routine and uh, with like-minded persons and friends. National parks organize uh, um, uh, reception of participants, uh, provide accommodation and food. Uh, newcomers uh, ha have to have uh, um, small training regarding the field work from one of the um, experienced uh, OSM community member. Um, and uh, one of this, uh, one of example of that such work is a uh, stock map, um, stock nest map. Um, it's a result of such uh, meeting. Uh, they will, uh, it was started in Poland, and Ukrainian team uh, would like to participate in such project. Uh, so this time we decided to collect extra data uh, that does not directly um, relate it to the base map. Uh, because um, stock mess, uh, nest uh, had been considered by us as a point of interest and, and a good uh, reference object. Um, the other um, community activity is online mapping party. This type of activity usually relates to the season. Uh, if the weather is not good, uh, we are establishing such uh, a session. Online meeting con uh, connects people from other uh, uh, re uh, different region and uh, um, it brings uh, a different experience from one local uh, community to another one. Uh, the specific, specific of our uh, community is that we have a special place where we can gather and map together. So it's like a double date in line and <laughs> in the real life. Uh, um, and uh, this special place is provided by Entetix company and uh, National University uh, in Kharkiv. Um, also, another variant of field work, and uh, uh, this my most well, so I, I like, like this <laughs> type of work, so, um, um, and I, I talk about it a little bit more. So for some territory we have no map box or um, Bing, Im uh, Bing imagery, so imagery also, imagery can be all old or clouded, so uh, in order to cover, yeah. in order to cover, um, mm, research territory, uh, such uh, work has, has to be done. Uh, from my experience, uh, students and worldly 
whilst JS specialists are both crazy in the same way about such work. And uh, for, for, for example, I um, have most tender feeling for the data that I collected by myself. Um, and um, uh, the National Parks uh, uses ArcGIS and QGIS uh, uh, in equal parts. And uh, ArcGIS uses uh, as a um, part of uh, S3 uh, conservation program. And uh, ArcGIS and QGIS have possibility to uh, get or send data from data and maps to extend uh, extent. And OSM data can be published as a traditional web map service format and uh, web feature service format um, services, I mean, uh, per request from our JS specialist. To summarize uh, my main point of the talk, uh, OSM is a great platform for managing um, um, base uh, ge geodata for national parks. If you'd uh, you are interested in OSM for national parks and education. Uh, we are open for uh, collaboration. Thank you for listening, and it was a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you. The state of Fukushima, Japan. I'm Ikea. I live in Fukushima, Japan. Uh, I map Japan and another countries. Sorry, my English is not so good. Uh, I'm a crazy mapper, and I'm a surfer, northern surfer. Uh, Fukushima, Japan. Fukushima is north of Tokyo. This is a Fukushima area. I started OSM in 2008. We spent many hours mapping towns in Fukushima. Uh, 2011, Pohoku, Japan, earthquake and tsunami. A huge earthquake and tsunami uh, hit the region causing major damage. A nuclear accident also occurred. The earth crust had moved uh, 5.3 meters. After the disaster, uh, Japan had a lot of support from around the world. Thank you very much for all your kind support. Tsunami damage. Uh, the Fukushima coastline is 130 kilometers long. The tsunami destroyed everything, and the receding wave carried much of the debris out to sea. This area I spent many years mapping has all, but disappeared. All houses and highways is, uh, were wish, washed away. The Beast Pain Forest was washed away in the tsunami. Uh, these photos were taken from the same spot. Nuclear disaster. A nuclear accident follows the earthquake. Uh, many mappers mapped the uh, Fukushima nuclear power plant. I mapped the radiation levels in Fukushima. I recorded 2,400 kilometer, 7,000 waypoints. Fukushima 2015, four years has passed since the disaster. The people living in Fukushima have mostly settled down to a normal life again. 
but nearly uh, 120,000 people who are evacuated still have to remain in the temporary emergency houses. Restoration construction has advanced along the coast, which was hit by the tsunami. These spots were taken from the same spot. Although conditions were very bad right after the disaster, things have gradually been getting better. We are thanks for this. Fukushima OSM community. There are not a lot of mappers in Fukushima, but we enjoy mapping and OSM very much. This is uh, OSM birthday cakes. In Fukushima, we had many mapping parties. Aochijuku mapping party. Aochijuku is a historical small town, beautiful wooden town. We mapped buildings, roads, and many fire hydrants. Uh, last year, we won the first prize in SO Team EU poster competition. We appreciate. This is Tsungajou Kasu. You may have heard of Tsungajou Kasu through OSM. We spent many hours mapping this beautiful castle. We mapped. Hazard map. December 2014, Aizuwakama City Crisis Management Division made home disaster prevention chart and hazard map. These maps of uh, these, uh, the base map of these maps has used load and building data of OSM and is made up in the form of overlapping the disaster information that is provided by the National and Fukushima Prefecture. These paper maps were enclosed in news of municipal government and distributed to all households household of Aizuakuma City, 50,000 copies. Uh, this is a hazard map. Yeah. That's all. Thank you, everyone.